Just finished building this stone pier. It's a real stone pier. I built it out of cobblestone. Uh, it's movable and uh, I'm gonna show you how I did it start to finish uh, in my garage and I came and I placed it here. It's built out of real cobblestone. What's going on is the owner wants a stone pier here instead of this post. It's like a privacy place. You don't want to put no trespassing but he wants the people to realize that it's private. So the first thing I always do when I gotta do a pier is I always come here and I get a piece of card. That's basically going to be the size of the pier. Have the owner look at it. Let him walk around. Because when you're driving in a car, you want to be over to see the top of the pier. You want to see over the top of it. So the agreement was this is the size he wants it. I'm going to build it uh, in the garage. And what I'm going to do is I'm making this pier and I'm going to make it movable. And right here, I just got uh, a piece of uh, sore pipe. Here's the conduit that runs through it. I got the wire and the conduit already because I don't want anybody calling me up saying I can't get the wire through the conduit. I put it in. I got a little door wall I cut here and I'm going to make my pier and I'm making it movable. I'm mixing my cement. I put uh, two parts sand to one part Portland. I need what we call a little bit soupy. What I'm going to do is throw some gravel in it. Mix that in with it. Basically, I'm putting my stones, my first stones, right into the wet cement. I'll go like this with this one. You see it? I gotta kind of get it in there. And then I know my first uh, stone is in there pretty good. It's gonna be 14 and a half inches. Put this one in the back over here. And put this one in the back over here. And I'll measure them all 14 and a half inches. Now if you want to use a square you could kind of that's how you know you got it in square better. I set my my first stones in the wet concrete and I got a couple pieces of wire here. This is from that door wall. I don't really need it, but you know what? It, it's just, I just did this to marry this into the footer. So uh, I'm going to wait a day or so, take the forms off, and I got my base done. Another little trick here I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little butt, bit of this, uh, this wire. I'm going to make it into a little thing, and I'm going to put it in the corners over here. Just stick it down in there. That's going to hold my strings going up. I'm taking the forms off the next day. This is the next day. Okay, this is a couple days later, and I took the forms off. I put it up on wheels because as I'm moving in the, uh, around the garage. And what I did was, remember the wires I put down in here? These have strings. And what I did was I put a toilet flange up here, and I'm dropping my strings. And the reason, whether you're building one 20 feet high or a little one like this, once you get your strings in a level, all you have to do is follow uh, the stones up with your top. Now here, down here, remember I put these uh, iron things in, and I just put screws up in here uh, where the lines go. And if you look down the lines, see the lines, how they line up right there? That's a big deal. It doesn't matter what you're doing in a pier, everything's got to line up. I made sure with my ruler I was 14 and a half all the way around. I leveled everything uh, and then I keep the this little cart here in the same position all the time and now I'm gonna start my stone job. Now we're gonna start working on the stone. Let's see what I did. I brought all the stones inside and I laid them out and I picked them proportionally. So now we're gonna start laying our stones on the pier. Now when we pick our stones up, we look it around, we grab our stone, and we keep turning it until we find out exactly where we want that stone to be. That ain't too bad. I like that a little bit better. So, first thing we do, we get this cement. I mix a little soupy. Some guys mix it uh, hard. We're inside today. 
I'm not worried about it. And then we just kind of, uh, was that the way it went? See, I lost my way already. Like that. And then we just kind of tap it in place like this and pick it up and put it down just like that. Well, then we go to the next one which will be over here and I'll pick uh, I'm going to do it this way. Just drop it right in there like that. You see that? Same thing. The cement's too soupy. You just get a little more sand, a little more Portland, and you put it in. But this is cobblestone. It doesn't, uh, you don't have to be a genius or anything to put it together. So now i got to go over the top of this and uh, kind of like the looks of it. You know, when I pick these stones, I kind of pick them with the idea of what I'm going to use them for. So I want to straighten that out on top. I want to get this bevel out of here. Just like that. So, see, it almost stays there without the cement. And I like to face my stones, even if they're cobblestones. Adds a little, adds a little character to it, I always said. See, I'm kind of facing it. Some people call it dressing. Then we just put that on there. Squish it down. I'm even with the line. Let that set up for a while. Just like that. So we got this little space here. And chip it up a little bit. It gives it a character. I'm going to bring it right down into there like that. On this side, see, found one close. I'm going to straighten it out. I don't want this big nulge on top. I'm going to straighten out a little bit there. I usually put this on the ground, but I'm just doing it for the camera. I want to get that off of there. See that? I'm hitting it straight down. I'm hitting it straight down with the hammer. I'm going to straighten my corner out a little bit. I'm going to dress it up that put a little character to it not too much it's kind of half cobblestone and put it right in like that see that following my strings up now this I'd say is about uh, two hours later uh, just got a rubber glove. See the rubber glove? Just kind of going over with my fingers. You don't need no fancy tools or whatever. This is what the first thing I do. So you just kind of smooth it out. Kind of hold the stone while you're doing it. And then for a little detail, just get your paintbrush like this. And go like that. Still a little, little wet. I'm not too worried about it though. Always in a hurry when you're in this business. See that? And then when you get that all where you want it, pretty smooth. A little sponge, bucket of water, you just go around the edges and you clean it off. Like that. Now if you want to wait a day or so, I could wheel it outside and put the holes in a steel brush on it the next day. See what I'm doing? Some guys don't like to do that. They have their own style. Nothing wrong with that. No right and way to right or wrong way to do stone work. It's more of an art than anything. As long as you get the desired uh, results, that's it. And that's how you uh, clean up your joints, just like that. Well, I came back sometime later and I'm kind of continuing on uh, this is just I just did this about three four hours ago just kind of adding to it you see I'm trying to you're always going to get the line only got three at a time it's small but what I'm trying to do is make it so you don't have uh, big lines going up and down
Now we're continuing on the next day. See this rubber glove. When I first doing masonry work, instead of using a trowel, they made me use a, a, a rubber glove. So there's nothing wrong with that as we continue on. And you can see the cement, how I, I mixed it. It's almost like Play-Doh. That's the way you got to think. The only thing with rubber gloves is you got to watch you're not dirtying the stone all the time. But you just kind of continue on there like that. And then you could use your fingers to shove it in where you want. Very, very simple. Where I think my height is going to be. Right in there somewhere. 30 inches, that's what I'm figuring here. This will be my height stone. Right there. Take our strings off. And we're right on top of it. Uh, now we're just filling the top up. That's I'll uh, leave it a little scratchy because we got to put the cap on it. Cutting out my capstones. Now here we go. You see, we're cut. We're uh, cut our stone caps out of that big stone, and we're ready to move our pillar. And so I dug my my base, and I'm putting some gravel in. I'm gonna st start putting my cap on, and it's it's not freezing out, but. In this time of year, I'm going to use a product called um, Rapid Set Mortar Mix because uh, it'll be dry in a half hour. I'll be out of here. I don't have to worry about it. Now I'm using a Rapid Set. What I like to do, wet that first. That makes it stick. See my cut marks in here? I did that because I wanted to uh, weld in there pretty good. You can see that stuff is drying already on me. See it? So I'm kind of in a hurry here. I'm going to get it down here level. I'm going to get to the part to tell you why I did it in the garage. First of all, uh, if I had brought all the stuff out here, it would be a total mess. It would probably freeze in the ground. Everybody would be mad at me. Second reason is what's going on anymore is because of all the laws, the code inspectors, and all that stuff. People want everything movable. Because the truth is, and I see some other guys brave enough to say it, and I did study law in school, that those guys are not really engineers, they're not architects, they're tax collectors. So as soon as someone gets a permit, most of them raise your taxes, so nobody wants to deal with that. Everybody wants you in and out. So, that's it. So, we're basically just sponging it off. That's it. It's all done. So now, I'm throwing the dirt around that I saved in the buckets, in case everything was frozen. 